Well, it's definitely autumn. That's one thing I can say for this week. The temperature has dropped. Who can believe it? Who can believe we're here, hey? We're practically in October. This just feels crazy. We began this journey like way back in March, just as the clocks were changing to go into spring and summer. And now here we are with the move and the change back another season, moving into another season, definitely in this pandemic situation that we're in. And I guess in the craziness and the chaos of this year, it's kind of comforting that that rhythm of normal life, that turnover of nature and everything, is still happening, although it's a little bit depressing. And I imagine I'm not the only person who's doing a lot of outdoors meetings right now, so has spent quite a lot of this week researching thermals online. Just a practical point. But there's so much that's good about autumn as well. And I, I am a real change person. I love change and um, I do, I love autumn. I love the colours, the, the quality of the light as the sun starts to dip and the way it shines through the leaves as they change into all the golds and the browns and the yellows. I love that feel of the still faintly warm sun when it's mingled with cold air and, and there's nothing better than that feeling when you do get a moment when the sun's out and the wind's not too strong and you just sit and feel that warmth on you and maybe if you're lucky grab a coffee or a quiet moment. It's awesome. And nature's changing all around us as well. And, and, and I love to, to have those moments where you can connect with it. And, and that's really what's got me thinking this week because earlier on in the week, I was awake in the small hours and I was lying there listening to something that's a real feature of autumn. And it's the sound of the tawny owls calling. I don't know if you have them in your area. We're, we're pretty built up area around here, but there are actually loads of owls, which is amazing. And they've got that characteristic sound, haven't they? The twit to woo, it's that classic owl sound. But did you know that actually those two calls are made by two different owls? Apparently it's usually the female who twits, and then the to woo is actually the male. It's like an answer to, to her call out. So what's happening in those moments is, is one owl literally calling out into the night, into the darkness, into the cold. And, and to me, it always sounds like a question to wit. It's like, hey, anyone out there? Are you hearing me? Are you there? Are you listening? And there's that brief pause. And then you hear the to woo, this, the lovely answer. They're like, yeah, I'm here. I'm out here. I hear you. And I love that. And I lay there listening to it and it got me thinking about so many conversations I've had in this season where there's a real fear and anxiety around because we're going back into, for many people, lockdown or localised lockdown or just increased restrictions. And there's this sense, whether it is because of enforced restriction or just your own vulnerability and advice that you're getting, that, that, all, that, that our freedom's being clamped down again and the connections that we have and the opportunities we have to reach out and be with our loved ones, that that's starting to get narrow again. And maybe there'll even be a time when we might have to do a more severe lockdown again. And people are frightened of that. People are saying to me, I don't know how I'll do it. How will we cope with that? And we know how rubbish isolation is. We know how hard isolation is for human beings who need one another. But what I'm hearing from people is, is, is about isolation, but there's something more that I've heard said so many times this week about what people found hard in the last lockdown. And it's what happens when our cry, like the, the tawny owl calling to wit, is met with just silence. It's... It's the recognition, the realisation that in a crazy moment, actually, for some people, what they felt was how easily they were forgotten. How, in their sense, how unimportant they seemed to be to other people. The people they would usually connect with and interact with in their life. That in that moment when everything went quiet and they called out, what they got was no response. No one remembered them. No one reached out to them. No one thought to call on them. No one missed having them in their life enough to reach out. When they called, no one answered. And so in this season, as we hit a time where maybe that will happen again, I wonder if there's something we can do better this time to help people not have to feel like that. Because there's nothing worse than feeling that 
Because as people, we all need to feel significant and important and valuable to someone. We all need to know that if we weren't around, that would leave a gap in someone's life. And the reality is, most of those people do mean things to other people, but maybe they're just not the key connections. And in the craziness of lockdown, probably what we all did is retreated to our two, three main connections because it just took so much effort to reach out. But in this season, are there people you could reach out to who you might have forgotten to last time who actually do really matter to you? I know in the, the brief season in July and August that we've been able to see people, some of the conversations that I've enjoyed the most have been the coincidence ones, the people I've just seen walking down the street, the people I, I hadn't thought of in lockdown, but actually I really miss. Is there someone you could reach out to who's in that category? Someone you normally see, but you wouldn't have on your like top list of mates or people who are at the top of your mind to keep in touch with. Maybe someone from work who you used to pass in a corridor, that, that person you used to always wave at in church, the school mum or dad you used to see at drop off, but now you don't because you can't linger. You know, it's those little coincidental moments that we've lost. And sometimes that means that people have dropped out of, of our lives. And the risk is, is that for some of those people, they feel like they've dropped out of everyone's life, that they just don't matter. And if that's you, if that's how you're feeling, if you're feeling that sense of terror, that sense of what do I do if that happens again and just no one reaches out to me, I want to tell you that you're not forgotten, that, that we think of you, that we hold you. And I want to right now hold you in a moment of prayer with God. And I want to say, I, I hear how awful that is. And I hear the fear and I hear the anguish. And I want to tell you, you are so much more significant than you feel in those moments. And I want to tell you that God never forgets a single one of us, that we are all seen, that we are never forgotten by God. In Hebrews 13, Paul reminds us that God says he will never leave us alone. Never. That's the Passion Translation. You can see, I don't know if you can read it, this is one of our little badges for Headstrong. And it says never alone. And it's something you can wear that reminds you of that. That even in those moments where you feel isolated, where you feel alone in a moment, where maybe you feel overwhelmed by the pressures of life and you feel like you don't have anyone to reach out to, maybe you do feel forgotten. You are never forgotten by God. You are never alone because God is with you. So I pray this time will be different. And, and I would nudge every single person watching to just pause for a minute when this video finishes and think and pray and ask God, who should I get in touch with? Think about who you've seen in this interim season and then think, what could I do to keep in touch with some of those people in this one? If we hit another spell or maybe you're in one now because of localised measures. Who could I reach out to? But if that's you, let's just take a moment to pray. So Lord God, I just pray for people who are feeling forgotten, who are feeling like maybe they don't matter to the other people in their lives, who are feeling like they're calling out just into the darkness and no one is answering, no one is out there. And I pray that just through the power of your Holy Spirit, there might be nobody who watches this video who remains disconnected, that through your amazing linking and interlinking of people, you would make sure that nobody is forgotten by the human beings in their life. But aside from that, just right now, I want to hold in this moment anyone who feels that way and ask, Lord, that you surround them with your Holy Spirit, that they would know that they are never alone, that you will never leave them, you will never forsake them, you will never forget them. I just pray that you would let them know just how much they matter to me, to all of us at Mind and Soul, but most importantly to you, Lord God. I pray that they would know how significant they are, how valued they are. And I pray that through your supernatural touch, you would bring them a peace that somehow helps with the anguish of what they're feeling right now and takes away some of the anxiety of this moment and of this season. In Jesus' name, Amen.